Hey y'all, we're going to briefly go over how trajectory sequences work in this video uh, because it might not be inherently intuitive, at least not all the aspects of it. Uh, we're not going to go too in depth. You can check out the documentation on Learn Roadrunner for that. But before we start, uh, you should be familiar with how normal trajectories work. So what do trajectory sequences bring us that normal trajectories uh, can't do? A few things. It makes working with complex long trajectories uh, a lot nicer. We don't need to split everything into multiple trajectories anymore. Previously, every time you would run into a continuity exception, you'd need to split it, uh, and then you'd have like 20 different trajectories. Now you can just keep chaining trajectories, and the sequence builder will handle it for you. Uh, this doesn't absolve you of continuity exceptions. Uh, the trajectories will still decelerate uh, and accelerate. You still need to follow the laws of physics, but it just makes the syntax a lot cleaner. We can take a look at this arbitrary code sample on the left using normal trajectories and then see what it looks like with trajectory sequences. It's just way cleaner. So if you noticed in that code, we can actually run turns and weights inside a trajectory sequence now. These run exactly as you would expect. Just make sure you use wait seconds instead of wait. So that's all fine and dandy. It's fairly intuitive if you've written code in Roadrunner before. But let's take a look at markers. Markers are much more powerful in trajectory sequences. Uh, this is because they can now be embedded into turns and wait segments. So this allows us to run your entire auto within a single trajectory sequence with all the logic, with activating mechanism, mechanisms and such. All the norm, normal markers would work as you would expect, no change in functionality, but trajectory sequences introduce three new markers, two unstable ones, or offset markers that are marked unstable, and then add temporal marker. And add temporal marker is preferred over displacement markers uh, with trajectory sequences. Let's take a look how trajectories work to understand why let's make up a trajectory we have a um spline two spline two actually let's move this over a bit right there we have our spline two let's do a dot forward um and then we have a weight seconds uh, you know we're waiting three seconds in that um then we have a dot strafe uh so this is a single trajectory sequence you know we have a spline we're splining somewhere then we go forward and then we wait for three seconds and then we strafe so uh let's draw the trajectory out on as as a little timeline so we have our spline two we have our forward, we have our wait for three seconds, and then we have our strafe. Uh, actually, let's make wait seconds a little longer just for demonstration purposes. Then we have our strafe. So uh, we have, this is zero seconds and this is 10 seconds. So our whole trajectory sequence takes 10 seconds. Now let us graph the duration of the uh, of the entire trajectory sequence. We have seconds, and we have duration. So this should be fairly intuitive. You have a monotonically increasing graph of duration, right? Makes sense because you have you just your bot is going along the trajectory. You start off at ten seconds or zero seconds at in the middle right here, you're at 5 seconds. Uh, around here, you're at 2.5 seconds. And around here, you're at 7.5. It's, you know, a fairly linear increasing, linearly increasing process. Fairly intuitive. However, if we look at displacement, um, this was fairly straightforward with uh, normal trajectories. You'd have a monotonically increasing graph for that. But because we are... Uh, trajectory sequences allow for weights and turns. Uh, you no longer have that relationship. So we have spline two, you know, increases displacement. Um, let's label it displacement. And displacement is the amount that the bot travels during the trajectory. Um, it's just you know, how however many inches or meters, whatever. Um, it's a it's a un a, dis a value of distance. So you have displacement. Uh, we have spline two going up. And we have forward progressing it, but then we have wait seconds, and nothing increases uh, during wait seconds because the body isn't moving, right? Um, and then we strafe. So we can see that it is no longer a monotonically increasing graph. Um, it's just flat at this section right here. 
uh, because we're not moving. And this is the same with turn if you were to replace wait seconds with a turn 45 degrees. The bot isn't moving, it turns in place. So uh, we don't need this graph anymore. Uh, that was fairly, that was the explanation. So how does that affect markers? If we do your normal, add displacement, oops, add displacement marker right there. Uh, and you run an action, you know, we have the spline two right here, we have the forward right here, and then we add the marker between the forward and the wait seconds, because that's where we put our marker, so right here. So our marker will run after the forwards, right there. Um, makes sense. But if we run, if we add the marker before wait seconds, or after wait seconds, right there, we, we'd expect it to run right there, right? But it actually runs right there. Uh, so why is that? It's because that um, this marker right here, it'll just take the displacement uh, of the, the trajectory at that time. And because the displacement doesn't increase along this entire section, uh, the displacement is equivalent, you know, along this entire section. So we, our value is, uh, it just takes our first value that is equivalent to, which is right there. And so uh, we can't actually run a marker here using add displacement marker without specifying um, whatever value it would be on the strafe. Um, so it's it's impossible to do that. So what do we do? We replace it with a temporal marker. And so because time is constant, constantly increasing during this entire trajectory, it will work. So this adds a marker right there between the wait seconds and the strafe. And if we move, oops, we don't need that. And if we move the marker, before the wait seconds, it will now go where we expect, right there, between the forward and the wait seconds. Uh, so yeah, always use temporal markers with trajectory sequences. So let's look at the other two markers, the offset markers. So they're, um, the syntax is unstable. underscore add temporal offset marker kind of a doozy uh, the the unstable is there just because it's subject to change uh, this is not a finalized API but uh, it's still useful and it's great uh, this is especially powerful because it allows us to arbitrarily add actions uh, within the turns and the weights. Uh, so let's do an offset marker, right? We're going to do an offset marker uh, with an offset of 0, 0, 0.0 right here. And so that is the same as, or an offset temporal marker, uh, offset temporal right there. So with an offset of 0, 0, 0.0, and that runs um, a marker right there between the forward and the wait seconds. Same as add temporal marker, just as you, you'd expect. Um, but let's increase the offset to... 1.0 and obviously this syntax right here uh, isn't the actual syntax because I don't really have enough room um, so check out learn roadrunner for the actual code uh, and documentation so we take our marker which is between forward and wait seconds and we add one second to it so we're actually running the marker at this section right here um, so yeah that's really powerful because you can run code during the wait. So let's say we want to drop a servo or we want to go forward. We want to drop a servo, um, but not immediately after we stop. Uh, actually, you know what? Immediate, one a after we stop, uh, and then we want to bring it up halfway through. So we want two markers with that. We have an offset marker there with an offset of zero, and then we have an offset temporal marker 0.5. Um, actually, let's make that one. One second. Doesn't really matter. Zero seconds. So we take our marker, 
we start out right here. Uh, that's our first marker. So this one. So our maps to right there. And then this one maps to right here. Because that is one second. So you can see it's really flexible. Um, we can put markers anywhere along the trajectory this way rather than with uh, the normal markers, uh, which you could globally evaluate, but uh, you'd have to know the length of the entire trajectory beforehand, which sucks. Um, so we can uh, even do negative offsets. So let's do negative one. Uh, so this is no longer there. We, we go in the negative direction and our marker is right there. So we are now actually running an action inside the forward. So that's great. Um, that's basically the gist of it. The offset displacement marker does the same thing except with displacement. Uh, but the caveat is with, um, as discussed prior, the uh, displacement doesn't increase during weights and turns. So it's a little bit confusing and the markers will project to the first value. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there isn't much else to explain um, that would be best conveyed over a video. Uh, check out Learn Roadrunner, uh, the documentation for more information. Uh, if you want to play around with uh, trajectory sequences or visualize them uh, before loading them onto the bot, check out Meet Meep, description down below. And um, yeah, happy coding.